So this place is a complete mess again. Um, all the tools are out and various bits and pieces that I've been working on. So I've finished work for the year now. I actually start a new job at the beginning of the year. And the aim was to get the as much done on the Austin as possible and get it on the road. So Austin's over here. Uh, the problem is now it's it's a bit too close to Christmas and it's a bit hard for me to organize it. Um, a friend of mine who hopefully has a trailer I can use is up in Auckland at the moment. And another friend of mine who's got a trailer doesn't have it with him. So I need to work out exactly how I'm going to do that. Um, I may just have to um, get a, a transporter or something, get someone to come and actually drop me off there and pick me up again when it's all done. Uh, well, theoretically, if it's all done, you can drive it. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any cars suitable for towing a trailer, just the MGB there. So that'll be something I have to work out next year, but it means I've got a little bit more time to to do the final little bits and pieces on this. So uh, the straps are all done. I've taken the bonnet off because I've now got time to fix the bonnet properly and put it in with the parallel sides along here. And I've also tweaked the radiator grill because I found that this was off square. It's always been a little bit off square and I keep adjusting it and it keeps moving back. And then I found out a lot of these bolts and things were all loose. So I've tweaked it and tightened everything up. Uh, you can actually see how the radiator has got a bit of a twist in it as well. And I think that might be why the surround was twisted. You can see there's a bit of a gap there, but no gap there. Um, you can sort of twist the radiator around and it'll go into position, but it should be fine like that as long as the, the surround is square to the car. So what I started doing is modifying the tops of the original bonnet I made which had longer sides. It had these sort of uh, trapezoid shaped sides where they really need to be um, square, well rectangular, like these ones. So I had this one on the car. I took that one off. Those are the, the top panels for that. And I went back to the other one I had and shortened the top uh, the top panels by by cutting off the existing hinge parts that's these here and then bending up a new hinge on them and unfortunately the first one I did went wrong so you can see this is where I I cut it and started making the little fingers for the the hinge but what I didn't realize was when I was making this oops something went slightly wrong and that line isn't straight uh, you can see there's a gap there straight all along there and there's a big gap at the end so it kind of curves which means this was no good so that was a major pain because it meant I had to make a whole new top so I spent today doing that and made up a second one and then went to put the two halves together so I could put it on the car and mark off the front and the back. And for a horrible moment, I thought I'd actually ended up making one off the opposite hand. So I ended up with two the same. Um, I almost cried, but uh, I realized then quickly that actually what I'd done is I had picked up this one, the one I was replacing, and was trying to fit my new part to that. And of course, they were the same. So luckily I hadn't made the wrong top. Um, this is why it's got a big cross on it and tape now because with all these parts floating around here it was starting to get really confusing which bit went where. So I made a new um, a new top. Uh, I'm not even sure which one it is. And this time I made sure I got that line really straight because that's the one you see on the side of the car. And also it'll affect the hinge if it's not completely straight. And you can see that this hinge line is much higher up the bonnet. So it's all wet because I was sanding things down and uh, used a Scotch-Brite on it. And it gets covered in aluminium dust. 
so uh, that'll go on the car there the hinge line is closer to the top of the bonnet which means when you lift the hinge up it's not going to hit the back of the headlight and uh, the panel that'll go underneath it will be rectangular the way it should be so I spent all day doing that tomorrow because I'm on holiday I will make the new bottom panels um, normally what I would do is I'd make the hinge all in one go so I'd make the the two panels have them flat and then join them together but because because of the way I've done it this time I tried it some, something different I actually lined it up with the the original panels put the hinge pin through and then folded over the little fingers then pulled the hinge pin out and uh, separated out the bottom panels so hopefully when I make the new bottom ones which are basically going to be exactly like this but of course now they need to be a little bit longer uh, I should just be able to fit those in and fold the little fingers over the existing the existing brass pin inside there so that's why everything's a mess and there's bits of aluminium all over the floor and stuff everywhere the other good news is yesterday I went and collected the that's the the new crankshaft for the Riley which has uh, the flywheel here has had a new taper machined on it to fit the new crankshaft and under here is the Riley block with the new white metal bearings which have all been line board so one of the things I need to do is take this cover back off and um, to fit the crank into this block because it's a bigger crank you actually need to relieve the hole in the front of the block here a little bit uh, just so you can actually wiggle the thing through um, so I need to figure out exactly where I need to make the the little clearances so that the the crankshaft will fit through there but the good thing is that means I can now start looking at assembling the engine although the first thing I really need to do is take the uh, the clutch the flywheel all of that stuff for balancing although I think I'm going to do a test assembly first because the rods I have are three millimeter longer rods which gives you higher compression but it also means the pistons come up higher um, in the block here so you end up having to machine a little bit off the corners of the pistons uh, to clear the valves so I do I do have my mill there but I'm not sure I'm confident enough to be able to do that myself um, that may be something I actually take to the the engine shop and I'm going to have to go and see them anyway because I'm going to want them to uh, balance everything because they'll they'll statically and dynamically balance uh, all the rotating assembly. So uh, I'm not sure if they're on holiday yet. I may give them a call tomorrow and just have a, a chat to the guy there and see what they can do um, and see if they would be able to do the the machining of those pistons. Um, like I say, I, I do have the mill, and it should be easy enough to do it if I made up some sort of jig to be able to accurately hold them. Um, I guess you have to hold the piston at an angle, and I'm wondering if you can ensure that it's the right orientation by putting a fake gudgeon pin through it um, so that you can line it up on that. Uh, I'll have to have a think about that and maybe have a play with some scrap scrap metal or, or plastic or something like that but first thing I think will be some sort of test assembly of everything and make sure it rotates and the pistons actually go up and down on the bores so like I say tomorrow I will finish up on the bonnet and because I had to go through my stash of metal um, which is all kind of all the sheet metals under that blue cover sort of leaning up against the wall on an angle so it doesn't all collapse in an earthquake um, I pulled out some more aluminium 
and I should have enough to do the bottom parts of the bonnet and I may cut a few blanks so I can start just practicing making this kind of door shape uh, since all my experience and by all my experience I mean one car um, is with aluminium bodywork I'll probably just start with that it's going to be a little bit easier I think anyway um, to play with aluminium first uh, so there's plenty to get on with I'm still waiting for the die to fix the end of the um, steering column there so the nut goes on I'm still trying to figure out the pedal type stuff I'm still looking at the brake setup um, and now I've got the engine there as well to start playing with so definitely lots to do oh and the rear springs I really need to get the rear springs on and also find the guy with the wheels so yeah there's not going to be enough time in the holidays I think